focus. Ideate. Innovate. Enable. Fiat, driving into the fourth industrial revolution. In a groundbreaking achievement, Seat, renowned for its excellence in the tire manufacturing industry, has reached new heights. The company with its state-of-the-art technology stands at the forefront of sustainable manufacturing, which can be better highlighted with the prestigious recognition that the entity has recently received. Seat's manufacturing facility in Hallol, Gujarat has been designated as an advanced fourth industrial revolution lighthouse by the World Economic Forum. This remarkable achievement makes Seat the first tyre company globally and also the first auto ancillary company in India to receive this recognition, propelling them into the esteemed global lighthouse network. In an exclusive conversation, we caught up with Anand Goenka, Vice Chairman of Seat, and Arnab Banerjee, MD and CEO of Seat, discussing Seat's groundbreaking achievements and what the future holds for the homegrown tyre maker. A lighthouse designation is no mean feat for it means that a company is putting its sustainability goals, clean goals, profit goals and new tech adoption goals all together and prioritizing all of them together. What has been the CET journey? Let's talk to Anand Koenka, Vice Chairman CET and Arnab Banerjee, MD and CEO CET. Welcome to the show and uh, what a fantastic uh, achievement with a lighthouse designation from the World Economic Forum. How does it feel? Does it put any pressure, less pressure, more pressure? What does it feel like? No, thank you for having us. And it's, it's I think, a matter of pride for uh, Seat to have uh, got this recognition. Uh, it's one amongst uh, thousands of factories around the world or one of the few in the world that have got this recognition. Uh, our people have been working hard at it over the years. Uh, we've seen great results uh, and uh, I think it's a great motivator for uh, the people in the factory, the company. Fantastic. Arnab, you're OG in Seat. <laughs> 2005, is that when you joined? That's right. Right? Yes. What has been the journey like and to see finally uh, uh, getting this designation for you, it must mean uh, a lot of history also being seen and making. Yeah, yeah, I can't recognize the company today vis-a-vis uh, -vis what it was in 2005 or even 2010. It's been a, um, a huge transformation uh, in a positive way, uh, but I always look forward and say that uh, there's much more to be done. So yours is the first tire company to get this Absolutely. designation, and that's a huge, huge, huge achievement in itself. How do you now see this uh, expanding uh, to other geographies, what does it mean for your clientele, new clientele, what does it mean for the business now? Yeah, there are two aspects of it. One is the internal aspect of how it's good for the business, efficiencies, uh, quality, cost, everything. And I think uh, it's a very good uh, brand to have, uh, to, uh, to peg our communication on, uh, especially in global markets, especially in Europe, uh, where uh, World Economic Forum, Lighthouse, uh, 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 is a known entity mm -hmm. and when we talk about uh, having got the certification it definitely puts a tick mark against our name. The second part is that uh, this, uh, uh, this entire journey internally helps us uh, make greener products. Mm -hmm. So use more sustainable material in our tires. Uh, the problem with that is it reduces the productivity of the plant significantly. These uh, initiatives counter that uh, drop in productivity so at the same productivity efficiency level, we are able to give better products, greener products with better label ratings now in Europe and the customers appreciate that. So and this is going to be the trend in future and this is just the beginning. I don't think we really work towards getting just this certification. This is not the end of the road. This is the beginning of the road right. and we are very excited and confident to take it forward. Fantastic. Anand, what prompted Seat to adopt and implement fourth industrial revolution technology at the Halal plant? Uh, right, so we'd been experimenting on uh, fourth industrial revolution technologies for some time uh, with mixed success. Uh, and then we found uh, tighter specification needs from our customers, mm -hmm. uh, need for greener material, uh, particularly as we started selling to Europe as well as leading OEMs. Uh, with all of this, uh, as Arnab shared, our cycle times uh, became longer. 
Uh, we moved from about 27, 28 percent green material to 50 plus percent green material. And with this shift, we saw a 30 percent increase in cycle time. Now that uh, was not acceptable from an efficiency perspective. And we tried a lot of things uh, and one of the things then we decided to go ahead was the fourth industrial revolution process. And with that, we were now able to see uh, great improvements in uh, these efficiencies. And now we are able to use a lot more greener materials and uh, uh, t live up to the tighter best needs of the customers um, and, uh, and have the same levels of efficiency that we were always having. Wonderful. Uh, I do know both of you are uh, fitness fanatics and uh, we, we have something called endurance it training. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> so you have strength tra training, you have endurance training. What were the pre and uh, post scenarios at Halol in terms of uh, what kind of uh, uh, implementations from the tech point of view were done? So what were the scenarios like? When you see the factory now and before, what has this fourth revolution industrial technology got to the place? So inside the factory, uh, big uh, big results already coming in. Uh, but as I said, these are, these are just uh, the initial part. For example, um, water consumption has come down by over 30 percent. Energy consumption, which is uh, a big thing for us, uh, has come down by about 15 percent. Mm -hmm. uh, our wastages and scrap, which is there, which is a complete waste in terms of money also, uh, doesn't create any value, has come down by about 40 percent plus, right? Cycle times, which Anand spoke about, were elongating. We right. have brought it down by 20 percent. So a lot of business benefits and a lot of uh, uh, good things for the people on the shop floor, the ease of working, right? People are much happier for that and they're contributing in a big way to the success of the plan. So it's a very wholesome, positive thing that started happening. Just inquisitive, how long did it take for all of this to be implemented in its full glory? Uh, I think uh, intensity-wise, it was uh, one, one and a half year. Mm -hmm. But uh, as I said, uh, 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 if you look at uh, analytics per se, this is much more in the first phase itself. So, right. I mean, this is maybe 5% of what we can possibly do. So, this intensity will continue uh, uh, going forward. And I think it will give us a competitive advantage. That's more important. What's important yeah. for our customers and what's important for the business. Yeah. And it's going to give us uh, a great, uh, uh, you know, boost towards our sustainability journey also. When we talk about the sustainability journey, a lot of industries uh, are making an effort to understand what the carbon footprint is like. Uh, how are these new technologies helping reduce the carbon footprint, if I may ask you? Right. So, uh, again, we worked on uh, improving our uh, uh, water footprint by about 20% all through the value chain from the beginning to the end. Today, for example, if uh, we, are, we will be able to produce nearly 15% more tires with the same equipment and machinery that we have, which means you don't have to order that much more equipment, you don't need that many more people to that extent, the same machines are giving a much higher output and that itself right. has a huge carbon footprint saving right. on, uh, on the plant. Um, Arnab, where do you see this now moving from Halol to uh, you know, the other factories? How much time do you think that takes uh, from the thought level to sort of uh, implementation? So we have six factories now. We started with Halol. Already we are uh, horizontally deploying some of the easier use cases to other factories like Chennai, Nagpur. Even in Bandup and Nasik, which are very old plants, we are trying to implement some use cases which are relevant, uh, Ambarnath also. Uh, so uh, that process has started. But each factory is a little bit unique uh, in terms of equipment processes and the people therein. Mm -hmm. So our next uh, uh, intent is to take up Chennai uh, with some intensity and take it for the lighthouse certification. And this will go on, uh, then we'll pick up maybe a third factory. Uh, to uh, It raises the level. Yeah. The process of certification brings you up to a certain level within the factory and then it gives you the momentum to continue thereafter. So we are keen to uh, uh, move on to other factories, Chennai being the next one. Anand, how challenging is it at a leadership level to be able to prioritize so many different goals uh, at the moment with sustainability, climate, people, and of course, adoption of new technology? Yeah, I think in today's world, uh, there are two very clear priorities, I'd say, for most CEOs. Uh, one is how are we adopting digital technologies? Uh, and the second is sustainability. We are seeing the impact of climate change in cities like Bombay and Delhi, where we live. So to that extent, uh, 
I don't think the, the sellability from a leadership perspective is a big challenge. Uh, however, the adoption itself is not easy. It's easy to come up with ideas, but how do you execute it effectively? Especially when you look at the capabilities of people. The people we've always hired have been, say, mechanical engineers, electrical engineers, CAs, MBAs uh, in the organization. Now you're asking them to do uh, high-tech work. Uh, and uh, building that capability itself is uh, a big challenge. However, once it is done, the excitement and the pride that people feel is very, very high. Absolutely. Um, last question is around your thoughts uh, on how uh, or what would your advice be to a lot of manufacturing companies um, that are now wanting to change the way they do business? How easy or difficult is it? What really are the challenges when we are talking about adopting this? I think uh, my uh, first advice would be it's not an if, but it's a question of when, when. right? Mm -hmm. So um, uh, because uh, adopting these uh, practices essentially uh, gives you an insight into problems which you are not aware of. So forget about solving those problems. So uh, we come to know of various things which existed, but we were not aware of. Uh, okay. So that's something uh, which is extraordinary. The second thing is, um, uh, from the customer point of view, the, especially in a process industry like us, uh, ensuring quality batch after batch is very critical. Anand, would you want to chime in about this? Yeah, sure. Uh, I think uh, uh, the first uh, thing I would say is that as you adopt fourth industrial revolution, uh, the impact that you're having on whether it is customers or the business is very, very important. So. Uh, what is the ROI of the investment? What is the saving? What is the productivity improvement? So we don't need to do it because it for digital for digital sake kind of a thing. Uh, I'd say then fourth industrial revolution also talks about end-to-end -end, uh, impact. So it should be completely ideally integrated. It can't be a niche happening in one corner of the plant where you say, okay, I'm uh, fourth industrial revolution or a digital company. It should impact the entire value chain uh, in some way. Uh, the third is, I'd say, capability building, again. So uh, uh, getting centers of excellence, data scientists, right. data engineers, upskilling our own people uh, becomes very important as we take on uh, the process. And the fourth, uh, which we learned, I'd say, the hard way, is building up the entire tech stack that, uh, you know, uh, we're using cloud, we're using edge computing in what we do. You need to have a data lake, for example, that you collect all the data and all of that is stored uh, in the right way for you to analyze it and use technology such as AI and ML, etc. So I think the entire underlying tech stack, uh, understanding of that and uh, developing it before you start on this becomes very important. Yes, yet getting into the consultancy business of advising <laughs> others also how to go about this. <laughs> no, we'd be very happy to be uh, one where we can uh, share what we have learned from our mistakes as well as the journey uh, to anyone. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. It was so lovely to have the two of you talk about this huge achievement. Congratulations once again and wish you all the very best for replicating it in your other five uh, factories very soon. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure yeah. being here. Fiat, driving into the fourth industrial revolution. Fiat, driving into the fourth industrial revolution. Welcome to the fascinating world of Fiat at their Hallol plant in Gujarat, where innovation and efficiency converge. The plant being one of the major manufacturing facilities of Fiat, focuses on advanced technology and product quality. The facility incorporates modern manufacturing processes and stringent quality control measures to ensure the production of high performance and reliable tyres. Actually, we started our journey of Smart Factory in 2012. Okay, and it started with the implementation of barcode and the manufacturing execution system, what we call as MES. So that time our purpose was to implement mistake proofing as well as implement traceability for the tyre. So initially, three, four years, all our use cases were point solutions and with no scalable options. The accelerated uh, development deployment of 4IR use case started uh, two and a half, three years back. And this has been starting point of our uh, light of journey or the big uh, uh, digital transformation. And I'm happy to share, uh, Halol has been designated as the global lighthouse network by the World Economic Forum. 
for the digital transformation. We are the first tire brand across the globe to get this recognition for World Economic Forum. As we take a closer look at the manufacturing unit, we explore five key areas that have played a significant role in achieving the Lighthouse designation. In the mixer area through digital solutions, the advanced analytics optimize cycle time as loading, mixing, extrusion and layoff processes run in sync to maximize output. Further at the plant, we explored stock preparation where the digitally enabled scrap monitoring with built-in root cause analyzer has been seamlessly integrated to reduce scrap generation from mixing to curing. Next, the compressed air optimization in the tire building area with predictive analytics enhances the tire building machine operations and IoT devices performing air leakage checks. The IoT-enabled dynamic heating and intelligent press control in tire curing helps reduce steam usage with enhanced efficiency through modified sensing systems in molds and dashboards. Finally, in the finishing and warehousing process, the ML-powered visual analytics revolutionized tire inventory management with automated palletizing and cameras detecting SKU mismatches. The Global Lighthouse Network uh, initiative of World Economic Forum uh, is a highly exclusive network. The companies which are really at cutting edge in terms of digital analytic industry 4.0 only get to be part of this network. So CIED over the last 18-24 odd months has been through this journey, has really upgraded its digital capabilities, invested in people and have delivered results in the Halol plant which is now one of the most cost effective, best on many KPIs in the country. right? So that's one big benefit that C8 has. The learning from Halol can now be taken across the manufacturing network and the overall operational cost can be brought down by 8 to 10%. Most advanced companies with multiple eight houses are exploring. And, and that's something we are observing, scaling of technologies and driving this program um, since, let's say, since the beginning with the scaling in mind. It's something we, we are recently, very recently, observing in specifically in the latest rounds of selection, the latest rounds of lighthouses, for example, where um, Seat Limited was, was one of the latest companies um, announced back in um, January this year. And, and this type of transformation that are already from the beginning uh, designed to be wide. There are, there are not one-offs, but there are company transformations from a digital perspective. Uh, that, that's something we are more and more observing in companies like Seat. Is, has now access to another 130 odd companies which are part of this network. All of these companies are at cutting edge of uh, industry 4.0, so there can be a lot of close learning that can happen. I think it's a start of a great journey for Seat. Um, as uh, probably you would know, Seat is the first tire company in the world to get uh, WF certified. Um, and um, as the journey is on, uh, it will be great for Seat to take it this to the next level also build the capabilities across other functions right now. As a part of the fourth industrial revolution, CS Halol Manufacturing Unit has deployed a VR-enabled setup for trainees to step into the world of virtual reality and receive first-hand training for the tire building unit. So today the culture in Proflor, if there is any problem for any area people would like to improve, the first question being asked is whether there is a digital solution exists. So if you look at the factory, it's a very complex process, tire, tire uh, manufacturing. And today we already digitized around 200 operators at touch point. I would like to give one example. We consume a lot of compressed air and the air network is more than 5 kilometers. Suppose we have an audit system where we would like to go to the machine and find out what is the consumption, where are the leakages. And it used to take around 16 man days to complete this audit. Today with predictive analytics, we could get the data within a click of a button. So we have become more agile, our decision making has become more faster and uh, the root cause analysis has become much stronger. The plant set up a project management space for teams to tackle complex problems, ensure transparency and drive productivity. CL's Halol manufacturing facility has truly shown as a leader in the fourth industrial revolution. 
the recognition showcases CS commitment to digital transformation fueled by cutting edge technology and unwavering passion in setting global benchmarks in the tire manufacturing industry. Seat driving into the fourth industrial revolution. Focus. Ideate. Innovate. Enable.